welcome to this week's Shotmaker episode. I've been really excited. Those of you that don't know, Chris and Scott were off in LA last week, and so they missed it. They missed what happened at the Ryder Cup. We left off with the US flying over to Italy. They're gonna win for the first time on European soil since 1993. And what happened? Well, it didn't happen, right? So the US shows up, again, against a European team that's missing a generation of Ryder Cup stars. Euro US looks great on paper. We have Brooks Kepka, we have Patrick Cantlay. Like, we're really stacked. You know, there are, those, are, those are good players. I, I want to so, so know who they are. This is the team you want to bring to break the streak. And day one, we are down almost complete shutout. I think we got one point in the first day in both sessions. Day two, Brooks Kepka loses in the largest Ryder Cup defeat in Ryder Cup history. Oh. And we are almost completely shut out in day two. It looked like Ryder Cup would actually be over in day two. We're mathematically impossible to come back. That didn't happen. We had a couple wins late afternoon. Sunday comes, they, they put up a decent fight and they lose. So really the surprise here wasn't just that the Euros played well because they did actually play very well. So, you know, if you're looking at it, any sports, like the team, the other team did play great. Okay. But the real surprise was how broken the U.S. team looked. Um, you know, real questions on the way they did the pairings, real questions if they had, you know, was this a boys trip that they didn't really take it seriously because they knew the Euros were going to be down, these great players. And then real question on if some of the players were even wanted to be there. So leaving the Ryder Cup, I mean, I think this is some great lessons, you know, whether you're coaching a golf team or running a business, just in team dynamics, right? Because the biggest takeaway from the U.S. team was that it really looked like some of the players didn't want to be there. I mean, they had one guy who didn't want to wear a hat, the guy who doesn't wear a hat who's now getting heckled the entire day, his caddy's <laughs> yelling at a Euro player on the 18th green on Saturday. I mean, bad, right? It was it yeah. was bad. They're actually like screaming at each other in the parking lot. I mean, this was really bad. And where it gets very interesting is where we're going next. So as a golf community, it was always a question if we should pick a New York area venue to host our most contentious of golf events, oh. being the Ryder Cup. And now we're going with all this dissension, the U.S. team in shambles, they're fighting on the 18th green, and now we're going to Bethpage in Long Island for our next event. So there's a lot to uncover here, a lot to unpack. But I think the biggest place to start is just the importance of team. Right? I think what we learned here is it's not just to have the best players. It's, you know, how do you make sure that your players wear the hat, right? Just put the hat on and then show up and play. Oh, it's like the restaurants, right? You can't have old GMs. Right. right. <laughs> if you have old GMs, nobody's going to want to do the dishes. Nobody's going to want to do the prep. So I guess it's the same thing. You bring, it's like you said earlier, Dream Team 2. Yeah. You bring all these great players together and, you know, they either overlook it or nobody wants to take that role as anybody other than I'm the I'm the best I'm the top guy. Right. So, but not wearing a hat I don't understand. Just put the hat on. <laughs> oh, it doesn't yeah. fit. It, it, it didn't fit. It didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that how many kitchens you walk in. Yeah. Start your leadership. You're gonna yeah. put the hat on anyway. The hat's right. on backwards or not on, and I right. mean it seems like a very silly request, but if that's the uniform of your restaurant. Yeah. So uniforms have a hat on. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no in between, right? It's either on or it's off. So if right. you're the GM yeah. or the owner and you want to lead your restaurant, set the standard of starting with a uniform. That's right. The hat goes yeah. on. I mean I agree. And yeah. I think the other element here is so some of the reason again, all speculation, nobody knows for sure, but some of the reason behind the some of the players not wearing the hat was that they have some dissent, right? And I think this is also something very common in the restaurant mm -hmm. industry right now is they feel underpaid. So because they feel, actually not paid at all in the Ryder Cup, but we've seen this play out in business, they feel underpaid. And so therefore now they're openly dissenting while you're trying to win. And I think that was such a big lesson to anyone trying to run a business is how do you instill in your employees like, okay, we can, there's a time and a place to talk about that. Right, right. The time and the place is not <laughs> the first tee no. on Friday, right? Like, we right. could maybe discuss that in November, December, 2024, oh. like, you know, it's It's like not when you now. hire someone, right? You tell them you gotta wear a uniform, right? <laughs> These guys going over knew how much they were getting paid, which was zero. Yeah. And then you had to wear the, the country's uniform. Yeah. You had, to, you had to wear whatever your teammates are wearing. 
So it's no different than the restaurant. You know this going in, and if you don't want to comply with it, then don't be there. That's yes. You know, because yeah. then you go there, and I like I said, I don't I don't know anything about golf. <laughs> You're supposed to be these superstars, and you go there and you get beat by a bunch of felons. Yeah. Because everybody else went to a different golf <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that's like if your whole restaurant walked out, and your second team stepped up, and still put out a great service. Yes. Exactly. Right? So I, I don't understand how the Americans just stood there and let that happen and not wear a hat. I know. But they made it about the hat. You got shut out in the first day. Forget the hat. Put the hat on. Get out there. <laughs> Tell everyone we're all in agreement. I agree. I think that's such a big lesson in these little things yeah. affecting performance, right? Affecting how the team does. And, you know, and I think as a group, I think the other big lesson here is now that that's over, right, it happened, you know, it was a bad night in the restaurant, it was a bad weekend for golf, you know, how do you regroup, right? Like, I think, you know, a big question becomes, how do you make sure that that team never comes back? Or not necessarily those players, but right. that dissension. Well, that attitude. Yes. Right? I mean, that starts with whoever the leader is on it, right? Yeah. I mean, going in, there has to be some kind of, you know, you have to be able to sit down and talk with them and let them know where you expect them to be. There's got to be some level of professionalism there, yeah. which there wasn't. Uh, there's got to be a standard and expectation. Apparently, they, they, they didn't get the message. <laughs> no, 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 that's like a poorly run restaurant. Yeah. You just hire people and say, yeah, get into the kitchen. Yeah. You know, do what you want. Well, yeah. things ain't going to go well. <laughs> Same thing on a golf course. Well, and that was the other thing that you start to question is the leadership because, you know, what you heard going in, which I thought was funny, is that they were criticizing the Euros for being overprepared. Oh, they have their whole room is decorated no with all sense. these old pictures. Who needs a picture of them winning 12 uh -huh. years ago? The mo our team doesn't need that. And then all of a sudden, as the team isn't performing, oh, we probably should have thought of ways to motivate our team before the event. So I definitely think the leadership is something to, to really think about. Listen, no such thing as overprepared. Yeah. Right. Ever in anything. You know, I got accused that a few times. <laughs> You take it too serious, you, you, you waste too much time, you prepare for everything. Well, yeah, because, one, I want to win. Yeah. And if I'm running a restaurant, by having a great service means I won. Yeah. So, you know, I don't take, I take that as a compliment if somebody says that. I agree. And yeah. I think now that, you know, so, again, put yourself in their shoes. They had a bad week. They had a bad month. They had a bad year. How do we now regroup? And I think the other element to think about is obviously leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Really figuring out, okay, rather than dwelling on all the things Zach Johnson did poorly as a coach, <laughs> fitness is in the Ryder Cup. You only get one chance to be coach. But now, oh. you know, the other element of rebuilding and getting ready for Beth Page is there's real talk that Tiger is the next coach. Oh, I don't know. How that's. Gonna go. I mean, listen. I don't really watch golf, but I don't think I, I don't think he's the right person to discipline anybody. <laughs> I think the look. I think the Murray's are really going down a bad road here. See who the Tiger is now. He it, might do know he is. There's been a lot of car accidents and cheating on his wife. Like I, I know about Tiger Woods. <laughs> it can't help but to know about Tiger Woods. That's uh, a very valid point. Like, is that is that, that your guy, next guy? The right person. The and right it's from a non-golfer. I know nothing about golf, but I don't know if I want him heading up my team. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's a really good question. So putting on the hat of Tiger, right. we'll assume whoever it is, right? Um, I think you're right about what you brought up about standards. Because I think the other part, you know, we see a lot in the restaurant world is it's hard as an independent to have standards, right? And I think you could say that that's a very similar thing to the Ryder Cup. It's hard to have a standard because you're you're it, right? There isn't right. another team that you can compare yourself to. It's not like right. basketball where there's a league. Right? There's one other team that you compete against who's completely different from you, right. but otherwise, you're really reinventing the wheel from the start. So if that's the case, how do you build your own standards? Right? You're not having your employee who works for McDonald's who knows the rules of McDonald's. Like right. You're your own island. So how do you start with building those standards? Like you start at the beginning. It's who, you know, you, you're going to hire. Once you start, you're hiring somebody to run the kitchen. You're hiring somebody to oversee the front of the house. Standards start with them. You give them the standards. And you watch to make sure that them standards are being handed down and they're being followed. It's it's work. It doesn't mean you tell this, you tell your head kitchen person it, and that's it. You never worry about it again. Yeah. It's follow up, follow through. Make sure these things are being done. And that's just how the corporate world does it. Yeah. They just don't let it go. They create systems and they put them in place and they follow through to make sure that they're being followed. Yeah. 
No, I think that's a really important element and definitely one that we're going to talk more about over the next coming weeks because this really is a very interesting similarity to what a lot of our clients are seeing. That as you know, you've had some defeats this year, it hasn't been exactly what you thought, but this idea of rebuilding and focusing on how to do it better is so much better than looking backwards and just getting frustrated. That there's so many things that we can learn from. Standards are definitely one. And then I think, you know, the other element is you know, what are the, when you're looking to hire someone new, right, especially off of this, it's also that lesson of they may look great on paper, but if there's, you know, intangibles, whether it's attitude or ego or whatever it is that sometimes that performance relies more on those intangibles than, than the resume. Oh, absolutely, right. You know, we do it all the time. You know, I might rather hire in a certain restaurant a really good assistant GM somewhere else than maybe somebody that already had the chance to be a GM, right? They're maybe a little hungrier. They might. Yeah. So I think, like you said, really figuring out what drives that person, how they fit into your role, your culture, may be more important than some of the experience that they may or may not have had. Yeah. 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 Oh, because it's easier to get someone like that, right? You can kind of mold them to what you want, Yeah. right? And, and, and take them down the path that you want them to go down rather than get someone that's been trained by a company or a person that you really don't really like their standards yeah. or their methods, yeah. right? And then it's hard to break them of it. So that's why, you know, and a great assistant somewhere hasn't really got that formal training yet. Yeah. You could be the person to give them that. I agree. And then I think the, you know, the final element that we're going to talk a little bit about in the coming weeks is the idea of not being afraid to reinvent what that team looks like, right? You know, you've had some you know, cookie cutter mold of like, okay, I have a GM and then I have an assistant GM and I have a backup house chef, you know, whatever those are. I think what we've learned this year is those have all transformed into something different today than what they were five years ago. So as we go into next year, whether we're coming off a win or we're coming off a loss, we can't be afraid to just really dig into your management team and the team dynamics as a whole and rebuild based on what you need today. You have to look at that structure. Yeah. And you, you can pivot from it, right? We talk about it all the time. You know, don't be afraid to pivot. If, if you realize why well, I have, you know, my, my payroll for managers is through the roof, which we see a lot. Right. And then we start asking questions like, well, what does this one do? What does, you know, they could really be honed in and you could have a front house manager, back house manager that does exactly what needs to be done. Now you're saving big payroll on yeah. that. It's just the fact that some people are stuck in that way. Well, this is the way it's been. Yeah. And they just live with it. You don't have to live with it. You can pivot right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I'm excited to use this sort of as a parallel of that couple weeks to really not be afraid to look back and see if we won or lost, right? Because, I mean, the U.S. knows they lost. <laughs> but if you're running a business, maybe you don't know, did I win this year or not? Am I winning? Am I losing? What's the score, right? But what we want to really do as we move into the end of the year is just take all the good, all the bad, and make sure that we have a better plan as we go to next year, or if you're the U.S., as you go to Beth Page, which, according to Chris, is without Tiger Woods. Without Tiger Woods. <laughs> We're looking for a new coach. Rebuild from the beginning, no Tiger Woods. He's going to put you in the same path you were just on. You know, I don't know, just, just by running a restaurant, sports in general, right? You don't want to go down that road. You just don't. You're bringing a problem in to fix a problem. <laughs> it's not going to happen. They're not going to fix it. You're going to be next year. We'll be talking here about how they lost again. The exactly. <laughs> and maybe they didn't even show up this time because Tiger Woods took him out drinking. <laughs> At least don't let him drive the car. <laughs> right. He can't drive up there. <laughs> so yes. Well, thank you again. It was a great episode, and we'll see you guys on our next Shop Maker episode next week. That was awesome. That was a good, that was a good.